Why do scholars use the terms BCE and CE when talking about dates, including biblical scholars talking about biblical events in history? This is Bible and Archaeology Frequently Asked Questions. Hey, I'm Dr. Bob Cargill, The Excavator. Thanks for joining us. Have you ever wondered why scholars, including biblical scholars, use the terms BCE and CE or before Common Era and Common Era when discussing dates and calendars instead of the traditional BC or before Christ and AD or Anno Domini or Year of Our Lord? Is it because they hate religion and are anti-Christian pagans who want to see the demise of all things Christian? Not at all. It has to do with a mistake that was made with the very creation of the Gregorian calendar, the calendar that most of us use today. The Gregorian calendar was established, believe it or not, in 1582 CE and named for Pope Gregory XIII. It was a reform of the earlier Julian calendar, established in 45 BCE and named for Julius Caesar. But the labels B.C., before Christ, and A.D., Anno Domini, weren't added until 525 C.E., that is, after Rome became Christianized, that Dionysius Exiguus, a Byzantine or Eastern Roman Christian monk, used the terms to calculate the date of Easter. He counted the years and numbered the year of the advent of Christ, that is, the birth of Jesus, as year one, the year of the Lord, or Anno Domini which is short for Anno Domini Nostri Jesu Christi, in the year of our Lord Jesus Christ. This became A.D., and the year before year 1, A.D., became, in English, year 1 B.C., or before Christ, although in Latin it was Antichristumnetum, before the birth of Christ. Now, here's the problem. Dionysius miscalculated and this error has been retained throughout the years in the BCAD system. For one, he skipped the year zero, jumping immediately from the year 1 BC to the year 1 AD. The result is a calendar that claims to be based upon the birth of Jesus, but which completely skips the first year of his life. You don't turn one until after you've been alive for a year. Dionysius, however, skipped directly from 1 BC to 1 AD and skipped the year zero. So that's problem one. But that is a minor issue compared to a much greater miscalculation. Jesus wasn't actually born in year zero, at least according to the dating of all other significant events around him using this same calendar. According to the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus was born during the reign of Herod the Great, but according to multiple ancient sources like the writings of Josephus and coins Herod himself had minted, again, based upon the same calendar, Herod died in 4 BC. So, if Jesus was born during the reign of Herod the Great and Herod died in 4 BC, this would mean that Jesus of Nazareth would have been born on or before 4 BC, meaning Jesus was born at least 4 BC or four years before Christ. Think about that. And if we add to these four years the fact that Herod the Great did not die immediately after the birth of Jesus, but, according to Matthew, ordered the death of all children two years of age and younger in an attempt to kill Jesus, after the wise men took some time to see the star, travel from the east, visit Herod, find Jesus, and then not return to Herod like he had requested, we can add an additional year, maybe two, to this calculation, making his birth approximately sometime between 5 to 7 BCE. Thus, according to the Gregorian calendar, Jesus Christ was born sometime about 5 to 7 years BC or before Christ. Like I said, that is a miscalculation. Now, one solution is to ignore facts and history and archaeology and just keep using the traditional calendar and say BC and AD and argue that anyone who doesn't use these terms is anti-Christian. 
People do that every day. Or we can redate every single date you've ever learned, including your own birthday, and memorize New Year's for every historical event so that we can accurately continue to use BC and AD. Or we can do what many devout people of faith, including most biblical scholars, do and just change BC to BCE or before Common Era and AD to CE or Common Era and just keep using the same calendar that we've been using. It's the easiest solution that retains the traditional Christian calendar, but that doesn't regularly remind people that the historical Jesus wasn't actually born on year zero or four years after Herod the Great had died. Now, there are other reasons to use BCE and CE, like the fact that it is not an overtly Christian calendar, like the Islamic calendar, that says that here in 2023, we are actually in the year AH, 1444, or Anno Hijere, the year of the Hijra, which begins the calendar with the Prophet Muhammad's migration from Mecca to Medina in 622 CE, or the Jewish calendar, which says we're in the year 5783, and is calculated from the supposed creation of the world. These are overtly religious calendars, and to create a common secular calendar that, again, uses dates with which we are all familiar, it's just easier to say that it's 2023 CE, or 2023 of the Common Era. This is not anti-Christian. It is simply simple. It's established. And perhaps most importantly, it's not highly problematic for Christians who want to at least attempt to be factual about the life of Jesus. This is why both scientists and biblical scholars use the terms BCE and CE. It's not because they don't like Christianity. It's because they like to avoid mistakes and miscalculations and historically problematic issues whenever possible. It's okay to be a Christian and use BCE and CE. It's not a commentary on your faith or lack thereof. It's a statement that you want your faith to be as factually based as possible. And if anyone has questions, just show them this video. Please like and subscribe if you like this video, and don't forget to ring that bell if you want to be made aware of future videos like this one. For everyone here at Bible and Archaeology, I'm Dr. Bob Cargill wishing you everything the best.